Welcome to today's video. Today's video we're going to be looking at the 2021 refresh of the Model 3. Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. Now a couple of months ago I did a video about the Tesla Model 3 that we had delivered at the garage which had some significant updates to it which was an integrated USB charger and USB-C. Well the Model 3 has had some major changes and I would consider this being a facelifted version. In fact I'd consider it the 2021 refresh facelift version of the Model 3. Now firstly they've dechromed the whole side so you've now got completely dechromed matching the Model Y, dechromed handles, dechromed mirrors and dechromed side, side panels and also the autopilot sensors our cameras are here. Now some people might like this but I would have preferred it rather than Tesla made it an option that you could dechrome it rather than just doing it. Now there is a reason Tesla has dechromed it, one it shows off panel gaps less, shows panel alignment issues less and it, it does look a little bit better on certain colours. Personally, I prefer chrome on certain colour cars still, like the white car I really think sets off chrome still. But yeah, they've done it mainly to stop misalignments of panels showing up as much. There is some panel alignment issues on this car as a delivery, which I've checked over. And also there is a dent on the driver's door that was handed over to the customer when they picked it up on delivery. Now these lights have supposedly changed. I can't really tell too much about having another Model 3 here to compare to. If it has changed, I'll put a note at the bottom saying it's definitely changed when I've got my other Model 3 to compare it to. But I do think that this light here on the right hand side is slightly different um, compared to all the other lights here. I don't remember it being exactly like that, so maybe it has had a slight change inside. The initial shape looks exactly the same to me, so as far as I know, it's not changed. But I'll have a side to side comparison for you and then you can compare it. Now, the biggest change to the car is actually these aero caps. They've completely changed the aero caps and the style of them on this car. The under wheel, I believe, is pretty much exactly the same alloy underneath if you did take the caps off, but they have changed the aero caps. They've also changed the wheels on the performance, which I personally don't like anymore. I actually prefer the old performance wheels. I don't know why they've changed them, but yes, they've had some completely new alloy options as standard now. Now, one of the major changes is it's now got an automatic tailgate or automatic boot, and you can make it go all the way to the top and stop there. And then to make it go down, you just press this button again, and it will go all the way down. Now, you can do it from inside the car and shut it and open it from inside the car, that's great. And there is aftermarket kits that allow you to also do exactly what this is doing. I don't think it's a massive, a great thing. I mean, if you can't open and shut a boot, then you're a bit lazy, but maybe a bit useful if you forgot to shut it properly. Now, another thing they have changed is the front window is now double glazed. So you've actually got two panes of glass rather than the traditional one. The rear windows, still exactly one pane of glass like the original Model 3. But yes, this one has two panes of glass at the front, which means reduced no road noise when driving as well. Now, one major change is under here. They've completely redesigned the front area. It's a little bit smaller than it used to be. And one of the main reasons it's smaller than it used to be is this now has a built-in heat pump, which means it should, it should be slightly more efficient in the winter and save you a little bit more range. Now, People will definitely, definitely do a range test and efficiency test on this. And I'm sure there'll be some videos out in the coming weeks as people get to test the two models to compare them. I can't compare the two because the one I've got at work is a performance and this is a standard range plus. So it would not be any way a fair comparison of the two cars. Now the biggest changes without a doubt are here on the interior. And that is because they've completely changed the centre dash console. It's different in every shape or form. It's no longer this matte black finish that used to get loads of fingerprints on like the previous model. It's got the built-in phone charger here with no cover over the front of it. And this flap is completely different the way it shuts and opens. They've moved the USBs from underneath where the phone charger was to now here on the back end, just at the bottom here. They're now both USB-C, so there's no USB plug anymore on the Model 3. The rear sockets are still USB-C, like the model that I had that I reviewed recently. But yeah, there's no USB socket at the front standard. They're all USB-C. There's no cover over the mobile phones. Now, I think that on the performance model during a launch, 
they might slip out of this uh, this area without the cover over the top but I, I don't know it's a shame that they haven't implemented the uh, like a magnet a magnet ma um, magnet on the back of the sensor because that would at least allow the new iPhone 12 for example to be securely placed in here and then not move but it, I've tried it it definitely hasn't got any magnet it does fit the new iPhone 12 Max uh, Pro, which I've got. It completely fits it, it fits it fine. So it will fit a very large phone on here. So there's no problem there. It seems to hold them in slightly better from sliding around left and right, because it's now got this like uh, Alcatar sort of uh, material at the back. It, it's not for me. I actually prefer the old gloss black uh, piano design, the way they used to have it before with the flaps. Uh, some people will prefer that it's matte. Uh, to be honest, it would have been quite happy with matte on the old type of design with the with the USBs built in, but with a cover over. I, I just preferred the way it looked in the middle. But some people have told me really, really badly that they definitely prefer this new interior look. Now the big question is, where is the USB for the Sentry mode now on the Model 3? And the answer to that is, it's in the glove box in here. And there has two massive advantages over that. One, you can now lock your glove box with a pin number that's separate to your car. So if you lend your car to your kids or on a rental scheme or on Toro, it means that you can actually lock the Sentry device in the car and whoever's renting the car off, you can't access the glove box, which means that if they crash or damage the car, that you, they can't delete the footage. You've got that footage safely secured here in this glove box away from them the other advantage is it's hidden away from sight so thieves can't smash your car and get get it out for example and the new thing that's revolutional to this tesla are actually giving you a free USB-C thumb drive there and that comes included with the car now you don't have to go and get your own now of course they've matched the matte finish on the door handles as well it's no longer got this glossy finish that picks up fingerprints very easily they've also changed the way the buttons look so the button here for the door opening used to just have like a little line and i think people were pulling the emergency pull handle rather than opening the door properly because it wasn't really intuitive what it was if you've never had a tesla before and passengers were probably dragging the door sills by not opening the doors properly so now tesla have copied a lot of aftermarket companies and actually put a picture of the car with a door open so now when you press this button it's very clear a door opening button well this is a weird one i basically just drove back from my filming location and i've noticed something that i'm now going to have to edit this halfway through the video and that is the sos button from the tesla and the U european versions uk version and the european versions is gone so there used to be a little sos button up here i'll just try and bring your camera to it little sos button here and it's gone it's now just the triangle warning which is basically puts both indicators on and they've done this for a tooling reason and that is just basically so they can produce the same car for the us europe and just one button it makes it just streamlined but it is a european requirement that that sos button is there and before anyone puts oh it's because the uk is no longer part of the eu well that's nothing to do with it because they've actually moved it and it's now here on the tesla dash it's actually on the screen so if you look here there's now an sos button on the screen and that is now the new emergency sos instead of the button up here now there's only two more things i haven't mentioned one very quickly down here is they've also checked de -chrome the sill in the car when you get in um, which is odd because most manufacturers bmw mercedes for example even though they de-chrome the outside of the car they tend to leave that part chrome but tesla have de -chrome that and before I show you the last one, if you're not already subscribed to me, then go and click subscribe, click that notification bell. I make new videos every single week about electric cars and also tech. The last one is under here. And that is that Tesla have now made this a heated charge port. So if you live in somewhere like the UK, Norway, where it's really cold, this is now heated, which means it will now melt ice and snow and won't get jammed or stuck from the door opening, etc. So it'll just blow a bit of hot air here. It'll have another advantage, which will keep these pins sort of dry if it's raining in the winter and you're only charging on AC, not DC. So a couple of new advantages there. Don't forget to check out my video top right. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week. Goodbye.